It's mowing season, mowing season, mowing season. Hello and welcome to another episode of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. My name's Tommy Cross and today we're going to be looking at lawn, that rich, fertile blanket which can be the centerpiece to your garden. That wonderful smell of freshly cut grass and the gentle tickle of your toes as you walk barefoot across your lawn. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Um, I thought we were doing my garden this week. Oh yeah, I did say that. A gentle tickle on your toes as you walk barefoot. Ow! Oh! Mate, I can't do this on your lawn. What on earth have you done to your grass? Hey, give me the camera for a second. Introducing Paul. Hi everyone. Paul, you've got a garden, haven't you? Yeah, it would seem that way. You've got a lawn too, haven't you? Debatable. Introducing Paul's lawn. <laughs> Just remind me, mate, what colour's grass supposed to be? It's green. Grass is supposed to be green. If you were to ask me to describe Paul's lawn, I would say it has a wonderful shade of I tried, with just gentle hints of I also gave up. I mean, to be honest, it's a good thing I've got my safety boots on to walk across <laughs> your lawn. We could forgive Paul for his lawn looking like this, especially this time of year, but because it's Paul, we won't. But if your lawn looks like this, don't despair. We can get it back to its best with just a little bit of TLC. Now there is a lot of work to be done in order to get our turf looking terrific for the summer months ahead. So much so in fact that we've had to split the video into two parts to get it all in. So that's it for part one. Join us in part two where we'll be Tommy, showing Tommy, you- Tommy, Tommy, we haven't even done any work yet. Oh yeah, we've got, we've got to do the work thing first. Let's go and do the work. But why is it looking like this come the spring? Well, there's a whole host of variables that can play havoc on your lawn. It could be the weather. Wet weather allows moss to start growing in abundance. Moss loves wet, shady, damp conditions. So it's no surprise to see moss starting to manifest come the spring months because it's got itself into a nice, happy environment. And that's then going to steal away that precious moisture and sunlight away from the grass. It's also going to stop spaces for the grass to develop and grow into. If you've got dead thatch in the grass as well, don't be alarmed if you've got a slightly anemic looking lawn. A little bit of TLC, a little bit of work, and we'll get this back to its best in no time. Weeds. Paul has a lovely selection of weeds. Very good at growing those, not so good at growing the grass, but we need to be acting hard and fast on our weeds before they start establishing. One other thing we've got to take care of, especially in Paul's garden, is windfall. Now, wind windfall, not only damaging to me, it's incredibly damaging to your lawn too. Now it could be branches, it could be bits of twigs, but if you've left the leaves to sit on your lawn over the spring summer months, that will cause devastating damage to the lawn itself. It's gonna swamp those areas, steal away the light, and as they start to break down, they can cause irreparable damage to parts of your lawn. So it's time for us all to spring into action and get some work done in order to get the best out of our lawn this year. First thing you need to do is get rid of the windfall. Now you rake up the leaves, get rid of any branches. Now top two with things like your leaves. If you want, you could bag these up, put a bit of moisture on them, hide them in a dark corner of the garden. This time next year, you'll have yourself some leaf mulch, which is great for your beds and borders, or you can just bin them or skip them. As I'm raking off some of those leaves, I'm actually raking up some of this stuff. This is a mixture of thatch, and moss, dead moss. Everything's dead in Paul's garden. Uh, <laughs> sorry, mate. Now the moss in your garden might look a little greener than Paul's, but it's still doing the same thing. It's trapping in moisture, it's stealing light, it's stealing nutrients from the ground, and it's stopping your lawn from developing the way it should. So it's essential we get rid of that. And this, believe it or not, even with that rake, is what scarifying is. Now, don't be scared when it comes to scarifying, because what you're doing is opening up the ground, allowing space for your lawn to thrive. And if you see here, there's bits of rye grass fighting desperately and fighting pretty much a losing battle in Paul's garden against the moss. The more we take up 
the better the lawn is going to be long term. So don't worry if your lawn looks scorched or if it becomes a sorry looking shade of brown, we can get you back to green in no time at all. But we've got to get rid of this stuff and we've got to do it now. Now you can use one of these by all means, but if you've got a bigger area of lawn and you've got a lot of moss to get rid of, you might want to enlist some mechanical assistance. Now using a powered scarifier is certainly gonna make it much easier, especially if you have a large area of lawn and a lot of moss to get rid of. Now, despite it being a messy process, we cannot afford to be sloppy with scarifying. Don't be tempted to randomly race around your lawn. Be methodical and ensure you cover all corners. Now, if your lawn has a lot of moss, it's worth making an extra pass across the grass. Work horizontally, vertically, and finish off with a diagonal run across your lawn. And you'd be surprised at how much moss can come from such a small area. So much that you could find yourself emptying your scarifier more than using it. Now, when it comes to larger areas of lawn, what I tend to do is remove the collection box. Once I've completed, I gather that mountain of moss up, bag it up and remove it from the site. Or top tip, you can even delegate that job. I don't want my moss coming back into my garden. So don't be tempted to put this on your compost heap because even just a little bit of this can make its way into the lawn and then it gets happy and before you know it you're back to square one so you take this down to a local recycling center they'll know what to do with it and that's to get rid of it permanently the other thing to remain calm on is if your lawn looks like this a bit of a horticultural horror show don't despair we've got to be cruel to be kind and we're only being cruel on the moss we're now creating pockets for our new lawn seed to grow into but we want our lawn looking great first we've got to aerate so what on earth is aeration and why do we need to do it? Well, the clue is in the name. It's getting air, oxygen, down into the root system of the plant. The plant in this case is your lawn. Now, the healthier the root system, the happier the plant above it. So if we want our grass to look fantastic throughout the summer months, we need to make sure that that root system, which is the boiler room of your plant, gets as much oxygen as it can do. Now, I'm using a hollow tine aerator here. And what this does is creates these little cores well, they look like little cat poos really, but these cores allow you to evaluate the health and composition of the soil below ground. And they're also leaving a void. So when we move on to our top dressing, that top dressing is gonna get in there and replenish the composition of the soil. Now it is a tiresome task using something like this. So I'm gonna delegate this one to Paul. Come on. He's doing it. Done. He's not done. And if you've had a wet winter where you are, or perhaps you've got clay or compacted soil, or perhaps the soil conditions aren't that great, it's well worth spending a little bit of time, a little bit of money on a tool like this. But if you don't want to do that, you could always use a conventional garden fork. Again, the same process, get it down as deep as you can, and then give it a little wiggle. You won't get that core sample, but what you will do is create that void, allowing you to then top dress your lawn, get that new material down there. But the most important thing is that we're getting oxygen down to the new root system. Now, top tip, if you are going to use a hollow tine aerator, I want you to lubricate your holes because these holes can get jammed up pretty quickly, especially in areas of hard or clay soil. And imperative to the success of this is that the core can come out the other end. So use something like WD-40, or you can even use vegetable oil, just get your finger in there and just give it a, a general application. So always lubricate before insertion. Tommy, we, we can't finish on that. We can you film an outro or something? So the lawn prepared, we're halfway there and we've got plenty of space for our grass to grow, but join us in part two where it's time to sow. Now, if you want any help with your own lawn or perhaps you've got a bit of a horticultural horror show going on at home and you want to ask for some advice, you can always shout me a message in the comment section below. On your way down there, you can always press the like and share button too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two.